Right. Where were we? Councillor Sweeting. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. I speak against the budget. I'm unable to support it as, like the curate's egg, it's only good in very small parts. Good that it recognises at last that a swimming pool is needed for usury. I remember only too where the jeers I received from the benches opposite when I mentioned this need in my maiden speech three years ago, only to be told later by a Conservative councillor that the leader had decreed that under no circumstances will the council build a swimming pool in Usley. This was the council's stance until very Madam Mayor, recently. Uh, Madam Mayor, I must ask a point of explanation on that one. I've not said that. What I did say at the time was we would not build a, uh, the, on the old swimming pool site. Now, that's what I said. You can't know. I won't need an apology. <laughs> Madam Mayor, Sorry. Well, unfortunately, although you've already made it, um, you're not able to make a point of personal explanation. You can only refer to a speech in this debate. <laughs> well, you're not going to get an apology. <laughs> um, under no circumstances was about council build a swimming pool in Usley. That was what was told at the Usley West Drayton Town Action Group. This was the council's stance until very recently, but pressure from residents as well as Labour councillors has changed his mind. However, residents remember the past promises of a health centre for Usley and three new youth centres in the last Conservative manifesto. I wonder what happened to these promises? Well, actually very little, although the council did indeed plod on with its plans spending an abortive £237,585 on the Harefield Youth Centre when residents campaigned hard against it. I oppose the budget on many levels, but have time to mention just one, that being the totally inadequate funding of youth provision in Hillingdon. Again, just compare the statistics and see how Hillingdon fares compared to all other London boroughs. This time we come second from the top in the table of cuts. Hillingdon has cut budgets by almost three quarters. You have only to look at what is being offered to see how depleted is our youth provision. There are buildings aplenty, but very little activity going on in them. The 200,000 for voluntary groups is indeed welcomed, but is being used as a smokescreen to hide the total underinvestment in the borough's youth the consequences of which are the high incidences of antisocial behaviour and knife crime which residents are experiencing. A perfect storm is being created with fewer police and a total lack of high quality youth provision locally which could be used to steer our young people well. The council's budget is one where sweeteners are being offered in an election year but one which masks the real problem behind the council's softer side of pretty hanging baskets of flowers in our streets. They hide the swinging cups to services. It is a budget built on sand for it will deliver poorer services and for many residents the realisation that they too will be adversely affected may come too late. I do not support the council's budget. Thank as you, Councillor Sweeting. Promises, Thank you. And like pie crust, Time's they up. will be broken. Time's up. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This budget, like most, is something of a curate's egg. It's good in parts and rotten in others. One thing is clear, though, it's definitely an election budget that puts the political interests of a vulnerable administration before the interests of vulnerable residents. Despite the claim by the administration that there has been no council tax rise for 10 years, some of our most vulnerable residents on low incomes have seen huge rises in council tax due to the government abolishing council tax benefit and putting the responsibility on local councils to devise their own scheme of council tax reductions. This has seen families on low incomes in Hillingdon having their council tax raised year on year by the back door. The administration has also cut so deep in some areas that they've literally cut into the bone and the residents are suffering. We have weekly rubbish collections, but we have daily fly tipping that's an ever increasing problem. We have parks with green flags, but many of them are not maintained as well as they should be. We have a council tax freeze, but though on the lowest incomes have to pay more. 
we have new LED lighting, uh, new LED street lighting that now cast very dark shadows that they make people feel unsafe. We have also seen the closure of three daycare centres and two children's centres. We have a cabinet member petition system, but it takes a couple of years, if you're lucky, to get anything done after it's been agreed. And the continual restructuring of staff has resulted in delays and casework falling in the gaps between departments, meaning that many of our homeless and vulnerable residents have nowhere to turn for help. Madam Mayor, in an attempt to cling on to the control of the Council in the elections in May, the Conservative budget includes some significant capital borrowing, which only seems to feature because it's an election year. But I'm sure the residents will see this for what it is, a cynical move to cling on to power at any cost. The administration's panic about the outcome of the local elections has exposed their political slogan about their financial management to look about as strong and stable as a house of cards built on sand. Finally, Madam Mayor, to use one of the leader's favourite phrases, for the avoidance of doubt, we will not be supporting this budget. Thank you, Councillor Curling. Councillor Allen. Can I... Oh, sorry. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I heard a comment earlier, and I thought it was quite a good comment. You can only improve people's lives if you know their history, I, this administration. For over 20 years, I've sat in this chamber at budget setting times, listening to an adult themed bedtime story. The fact that this administration has borrowed eye-watering sums of money and had millions in balances whilst residents' needs have been ignored. ignored. Tower block lifts have been faulty for years. Flats where mould is commonplace. An entire housing estate that the walkway resembles the moon or a crater. And yet nobody from this administration did anything. But hey, it's election time. This administration is not waving its green flag. It's dreaming up new ways to, to fool people. With each budget, has come more and more cuts. Let's cast your mind back. Closing of day centre, closing of Usley Pool, children's early learning centres, and showcasing youth facilities that cannot fully function because there is no budget and your budget will change nothing and brings a whole new meaning to children should be seen and not heard. Well, why is this borough cheaper? Well, it's not providing the services that residents want. Uh, I was going to go on to usually Paul, but I think I'll skip that because I think my colleagues have uh, given the VSP on that. This administration wants to buy a police station when the police numbers are depleted when the numbers are going to be cut by another 20,000 before 2020. Councillor Puddyfoot's answer is to give all elderly residents burglar alarms. Quite commendable. But who is going to come when those alarms go off? Far better to provide more police on the beat than machines that go bleep. This would benefit all residents, including the vulnerable, but that is not the case, is it? Councillor Puddyfoot just cares about his target audience. Older people have families. Older people care about their communities. They don't just care about themselves. They want to see police on the beat. So I will be opposing this budget, whatever they like to call it, because it isn't worth the paper it's written on. I tell you. Thank you, Councillor Allen. Councillor Simmons. Well, Madam Mayor, um, we can always rely upon Labour to restore a sense of momentum after a short intermission in the Council meeting. Uh, but I noticed that uh, Labour's Assembly member seems to have left the room with his tail between his legs. Maybe, perhaps, uh, he was not reassured. Madam Mayor. Perhaps he was not reassured, Madam Mayor, by the... Uh, 
Come on. I, I think, I'm sorry, Madam Mayor, I think that's fair comment. <laughs> I, I suspect uh, Madam Mayor was not reassured. I suspect Madam Mayor wasn't reassured by uh, all the, the Bodian well. Doyle of local policing, Councillor Curling and Councillor Edgington, sliding across the bonnet of the taxi to drive you away in search of a police station that Sadiq Khan hasn't closed. But let me turn to the specifics of what this budget does for our younger residents, Madam Mayor. CCTV outside our schools to ensure that children are safe when accessing their place of education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Increased capital investment in school places so that every Hillingdon child has a good quality environment in which to learn, yeah, yeah, yeah. including funding to ensure that Meadow School, with a rebuild, gets a proper dining hall so they can make use of their new buildings. Yeah. Increased investment in corporate parenting so that the vulnerable children that we look after are prioritised. This is a budget, Madam Mayor, which for young people in this borough helps to deliver access to housing, it facilitates jobs, it ensures people get the qualifications that they need, it helps get access to apprenticeships, and in recognition of the centenary of the ending of the First World War, when a lot of young people turning 18, who might have gone on to do all sorts of different things with their lives, were called to go to another place that they didn't return from. Scholarships so that young people who are going to university from this borough can get additional support. And we will be consulting, amongst others, with the Students' Union at Brunel to consider ways of ensuring that the distribution of that money is appropriate and fair. But let me finish with a point about youth centres. <coughs> Unlike Councillor Sweeting, I do not believe that young people in this borough are responsible for, and I quote, a high incidence of antisocial behaviour yeah. and yeah. youth crime, including knife crime. This is rightly one of the safest boroughs in London, but we are an administration which recognises that the world changes. When we built new youth centres, they were enormously popular, they were full. It's clear that young people in this borough want something different, and that's why this budget prioritises investment in a wide variety of groups that are already present in this borough, engaging with young people to help them increase the capacity that they offer, from the scouts to sports clubs, football clubs, that thriving youth sector that Hillingdon is proud to enjoy. Madam Mayor, this is an excellent budget. It serves the <coughs> needs of our residents, it puts our residents first, and in particular, those of our residents at the younger end of the scale. Thank you, Councillor Simmons. <laughs> Councillor Mills. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Well, now we know that uh, Hilland and Labour Group are going to be voting against this budget, and that really does tell us an awful lot. And I'm sure uh, Councillor Puddyfoot, in summing up, will say more eloquently than I ever will be able to exactly the consequences of that in terms of what it means. But just for one particular point, here we have a motion tonight that they are going to reject all the things that we provide, all the services, all the support we provide to our 300,000 electorate. And they're just willing to throw it out because they really would like to put up council tax, no doubt, and be able to increase the expenditure in some of the areas that are really keen to them. But I want to talk about some of the cuts that are in my area and cuts that we are particularly pleased of. These are the cuts in chrysalis, the ones that go into our parks to build new footpaths the cuts that we make into our playground uh, to make new playgrounds and new outside gyms. Those are the kind of cuts that we've been supporting and indeed every member around the, this chamber has been seeing benefits of those in their area as new playgrounds, new gyms and new footpaths as examples are put into place. And then there's our town centres and the work that we have done to make sure that those town centres are improved and look welcoming and produce a pride in an area. Yeah. And surprise, surprise, where we have done this, whether it's from uh, Northwood Hills up in the north through to Hayes, we are starting to see the empty shops fill up, people coming back to those towns, increasing footfall starting to occur. We're seeing people noticing that the area is improved. We're seeing people noticing that it's a nice place to live. It's, a, it's an area where people want to come and meet. It's an area where those that want to commit antisocial behaviour find it more difficult to do so because we are making the area more welcoming to a wider group of people. Those town centre improvements will continue and we are very proud to have led on that. 
And indeed, I was at a recent seminar up in Oxford where we were told that the work that we're doing in Hillingdon was absolutely inspirational to many people there about the, the level of detail from shop fronts through to the public realm improvements. This budget, which we are supporting, delivers not just the tenth year of a council tax freeze, not just the services that people want, but it makes sure that residents remain at the heart of what local government in Hillenden is about. That is the clear difference between a Conservative administration that is working to deliver for all of the people and what may come from a Labour administration that is so narrow-minded that in moving an amendment it ignores 99% of the budget anyway. And that was my earlier point. Their amendment was only about 1% of the total budget and now we're being told they're going to reject the lot. Thank it is you, not Councilor. worth supporting their opposition. Councillor Avery. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The world of local government funding beyond Hillingdon is, fu is full of doom and gloom, and we've heard much of that from the opposition tonight, and I would contrast that to the positive budget of this administration. We have a budget that continues to freeze council tax, which has now not been frozen not for one year, not for five years, but for ten years for all, a remarkable achievement in any set of circumstances. Having frozen tax, we have maintained and improved services. A local authority exists to provide high-quality, everyday services, but in a cost-efficient manner. Services may have changed, they may have been reorganised, but every reorganisation <coughs> always appears to become a cut when Hillings and Labour hear it. I could talk about many services, but the hour is late, and I will not. I will take just two, roads and pavements, something of which I get many emails from my residents. We have already made extensive improvements across the borough, but there's another four million in next year's budget, and another 13 million across the wider forecast period. You can really see the difference in the roads and pavements in this borough to when you travel to some of our neighbours. I could contrast that, of course, to the Labour Mayor at TfL, where if you believe the BBC News last night, and there was certainly no contradiction of it from the Labour spokesperson, there will be no money spent on roads before 2020. I think the point is made. I will also turn to education. We committed at the start of this administration to provide a good quality school place for all. <coughs> Primary schools have been expanded across the whole of this borough and two secondary schools at Northwood and Abbotsfield have been fully rebuilt into marvellous modern facilities. The programme before us tonight has a further £5.9 million for the primary sector and £19.8 for the secondary sector. We delivered on our promises that we made at the last election and we will deliver again on the promises we will make at the next election. I have no hesitation in supporting this budget and would urge all councillors to do the same. Thank you, Councillor Lavery. Councillor Dillon. Sorry, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, may I begin with an apology to yourself and members uh, for any uh, untoward outburst uh, earlier on. Um, and to you all you students, uh, you can see that we're all passionate about what we're doing, so uh, <coughs> it does get a little bit, uh, well. <coughs> Madam, um, I'd welcome from the leader if uh, I could see that calculation at some point on the police station, because for me that business case didn't make sense until this evening, and if it does make business sense, then that's fine, it makes business sense, but it doesn't get away from the fact that you've got £250,000 that you can spend on police officers and not on a police station where only three people at the most go every single day. That may cover Northwood, Ricelip, Uxbridge, South, so one each from there. But most people report crime on the phone. And, sorry? 101. Oh, 101. Anyway, uh, I've only got three minutes, so I can't. It's about having police on the beat. If we can fund those, it'll make a bigger difference. It's not if the business case makes sense, then the business, business case makes sense. That's a building. If you can fund six officers, that is much better prospect for the, our community. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Councillor Dinner. Councillor Crowe. 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, with your indulgence, and despite the element of repetition, I wish to take this last opportunity to express my pride as a member of Council and the performance that it has put in. Road surfaces, verges, support for the armed forces, the Lido, bunker, library, reputation for open spaces, parking provision, and particularly concerning me, the provision of a school place in a proper building for every child. Yeah. I'd also mention the uh, brown badge, the alarms, council tax levels, free swimming lessons, uh, in other words, concern for the elderly. And I do that without declaring an interest <laughs> uh, because I cannot swim. <laughs> May I uh, also join others in welcoming the students, uh, long-suffering students who have been listening to us. Can I just advise them, by the way, when you are reporting any of this stuff, please uh, get the details right because I, I've suffered from that in the past uh, unfortunate incident when I was younger <laughs> I, uh, I found myself the subject of an article in the press it was headed man run over by own car <laughs> get the details right it wasn't my car <laughs> It was my girlfriend's car. <laughs> and that is true. Can I again express my pleasure in a council which is financially stable enough not to be afraid of challenges and problems and which has a policy record of success? I believe that will be translated into electoral success. Yeah. And I support the budget. Thank you, Councillor Crow. And just to add, um, if you want to get the facts right, it is filmed, so you could watch the whole thing again if you want to on YouTube. If you have the, the stamina. <laughs> uh, Councillor Sansapari. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I am surprised to see that the administration has now half-heartedly think you to build usually West Dayton swimming pool. I welcome it because residents are campaigning for it for a long time. But Madam Mayor, the biggest question is why it was closed down at first. The reason for closure was, was to save Lincoln Council 30, uh, £32,000 per year in running cost and there was no any major reason given. And let me remind Mr. Uh, Madam Mayor, the, uh, who was chairing that meeting, the Councillor Bianco. And, and according to the, and it was closed in August 2010. And according to this, it has saved Council around 2,060,000 £2, pounds. And now, new swimming pool is promised at the cost of 30 million. Madam Mayor, what a great financial decision! Save 260,000 pounds and then promise to spend 30 million. Then in 2014, and then in 2014, on the same site, a new health care centre was planned, and around 180,000 pounds was spent on planning application. And four years are gone, and nothing happened. Why was why was I'm answering that? Why was 180,000 wasted if administration has not reached some informal agreement with the NHS? Madam Mayor, it is very interesting if we look at the timing of the both of these decisions. The, the decision to close down the swimming pool was taken in August 2010, three months after the council election. Residents who voted for them, immediately decision was taken against their wishes water was taken for granted. The planning permission for a new healthcare centre was granted in May 2014, just two months before the council election, was 
this done just to fool the voter because nothing happened a false promise never delivered now we can judge how much this administration is serious about oxbridge police station and usually swing pool madam mayor let me conclude by the quote by ibrahim lincoln you can fool all the people some of the time and some of the people all the time but you cannot fool all the people all the time and the result of may 18 council election will clearly reflect that thank you madam mayor thank you councillor santori and madam mayor we have no other speakers indicated so we left with councillor pulleyfoot and then councillor bianco to sum up unless you've got any other speakers uh, can i just remind members that councillor pulleyfoot is speaking in his capacity as seconding the original motion which means he has unlimited time Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. I might impose that. Might do that. Yeah. Um, Madam Mayor, at this time in the municipal year, councils around the country are setting their budgets for the coming year. There's been much coverage in the media of councils under extreme financial pressure, with estimates that around 95% are expected to raise council tax bills by either increasing council tax, the social care precept, or both. About 93% of councils will raise fees and charges for services, including green waste collection provided to residents. As I said last year, whilst it is justifiable arguable, that the, the justifiable arguable that local government is suffering financially to a greater extent than other areas of government, and members can complain all night about what government are doing, the reality of life is that we have to play the hand that we are dealt to the best of our ability. Yeah. We have in Hillingdon seen a reduction in central government funding, which together with the additional service requirements due to a population rising at both ends of the age spectrum and inflation, including salary costs, has requ required this Council to achieve a reduction in running costs of £118 million since 2010. In the coming year, we will need to find a further £10.6 million, and we estimate a further £53.2 million for the years 2019-20 to 2022-23, which is why, as we've been doing for many years, we do not prepare annual budgets in isolation, but consider as best possible how we can deal with the challenges that still lay ahead of us through a medium-term financial <coughs> forecast. Tonight, Madam Mayor, we will freeze council tax for all residents for the 10th consecutive year. It will be the 12th year for residents over 65, and as was the case in the past two years, we will again not levy the social care precept, which could add an additional 3% to the council tax bill. Once again, Hillingdon residents will not see a rise in their council tax, while those in Harrow will see a rise, as we've heard, of 3.49%, Halso 3.99%, and Ealing 5.99%. It is worth considering the value to our residents of that tax freeze over the past 10 or 12 years. Based on a comparison with a resident living in a similar area where the council over those periods raised tax by either the retail price index or in latter years as allowed by the government, a Hillingdon resident in a band D property will pay £469 less next year than a resident of that other council and will over the 10 year period have paid £2,200 less. For those over 65 during the 12-year freeze, the saving next year will be £518, with a cumulative saving over the period of £2,828. An additional spending power of £518 for many over 65s living on a fixed income and £469 for many hard-working family households does make a difference, and Labour can deny that all night, but our residents appreciate and value it. Unfortunately, unlike his predecessor, as we've heard, the current Mayor of London has not been able to deliver either a freeze or a reduction in the GLA precept, so all Hillingdon Council taxpayers will have a Mayor of London rise in their bills this year. However, Madam Mayor, setting the Council, tax budget, setting the council budget is not only about freezing or raising tax, it is about maintaining service delivery and facilities for residents, and it's worth noting and I appreciate that my Cabinet colleagues have already mentioned this, but in Hillingdon we have frozen tax while maintaining frontline services that many have not, including maintaining a free-to-use weekly waste and recycling collection, the continuation of our 17 rebuilt or refurbished libraries, offering a comprehensive library service, including activity programmes with events for all ages, turning them into real community hubs. For our residents over 65, the free burger alarm scheme, even in Botwell, free swimming sessions, free allotments, winter heater loans and a range of supported outings and parties for clubs and associations. Over 80s continue to receive the telecare line service free of charge, which helps them maintain their independence in their own homes. 
continued investment in our award-winning parks and open spaces, and they only win awards because they're so well maintained. (laughs) Investment in new schools, museums, roads, resurfacing, LED street lighting, new sports facilities, and new homes for purchase and rent. The budget and medium-term financial forecast contains a capital expenditure commitment of £435 million, which as well as including continued investment in school buildings, highways and environmental projects, provides for a borough museum, a new swimming pool in the Usley West Straighton area. That's Usley West Straighton area. When we last built swimming pools, we were told by Sport England that we had an excess of swimming water. They have a calculation which is based on so much per head of um, population. Our population has risen. We no longer have that, so we need to provide a new swimming pool. <laughs> but it will not be built on the site of the old Usley swimming pool. There will be a new library for Usley in a development which will include a minimum of 72 flats a discounted sale for first-time buyer residents, 12 supported housing units and a community facility. The reprovision of the Hillingdon Outdoor Activity Centre. And by the way, when we're talking about UZ, the fiasco with the health centre was down to the NHS not yeah, being able to afford yeah, it. We, we'd got to a situation where we'd actually offered to build it for them and rent it to them, and they still couldn't afford to rent it. Now, if we could run the NHS, then I'm sure it would have been different, <laughs> but we couldn't. The purchase of Uxbridge Police Station for continued police use, recognising the need for an adequate number of operating premises in the borough the size of Hillingdon. It's not about the front counter, it's about a a police station that provides decent facilities for the police to operate from, including the CID. It's not only about officers on the beat, there's an awful lot of support staff that go behind them and they need somewhere to work. Funding for for facilities for scouts, guides and other youth groups, as well as a refurbishment programme for all libraries and leisure centres, which together with the additional expenditure on waste and recycling, assisting with the running costs of police premises and the university fee bursary scheme, are examples of expenditure support that will not be appearing in many council budgets this year. Madam Mayor, I said earlier that all councils have suffered reductions in government funding over the years, but how many have dealt with that challenge has differed remarkably from what has occurred in Hillingdon. Whilst those around us have closed down facilities, cut services and charged their residents more for basic services, in Hillingdon we have not done so. In fact, in most cases we've done the reverse, building new facilities and improving services and at the same time building up financial reserves to help with the challenges that lay ahead of us. I'll come back to reserves later, but for the moment let me talk a little about fees and charges. In Hillingdon we do not have the stealth tax mentality, charging for green waste collections, etc., As regards our policy on genuine fees and charges, as well as having amongst the lowest parking charges in London, which for residents are again frozen next year, our residents pay fees and charges on other services and 90% of those paid by residents in neighbouring boroughs. Madam Mayor, again I referred earlier to the cuts in funding that we as councils have dealt with and what we anticipate still lay ahead of us. And to help us deal with these in a business-like and structured manner, rather than the reactive slash and burn approach that some councils take, we have built up £61 million in reserves and balances. And to put this in perspective, in our neighbouring boroughs, Ealing will have £15.4 million and Harrow £10 million, with Hounslow reporting that they may fall below the £10 million minimum requirement as they have a current year overspend of £7 million which they are struggling to deal with. Madam Mayor, the position of our housing revenue account is very strong, probably amongst the strongest in London. We have significant balances and reserves. We've also paid down debt, which gives us borrowing ability should we require it. But that will only be done against a proper business case and specific options. It takes strong financial management to achieve what we have done in both the general funds and the HRA. And we do that all day, every day, not just at budget setting. We constantly look at the ways of delivering services more efficiently and do not subscribe to the we've always done it that way mantra. Our policy of subjecting every area of service activity to the same discipline as regards business improvement delivery, service transformation and zero-based budgeting is something that I promise the staff of this council would happen without fear or favour. It is our steadfast approach to both financial and business management that has set us apart from other councils and that also sets us as an administration apart from the opposition, who year after year confess to not understanding the abilities and disciplines required to do what we have done and continue to do. Yeah, yeah. Madam Mayor, what we have achieved and continue to achieve in Hillingdon in the current economic climate is frankly remarkable. I would like to thank my Cabinet colleagues, particularly Councillor Bianco, and all members of the Conservative group who in one way or another are making this happen. Could I also thank two officers, the Finance Director, Paul Wayman, 
the Deputy Chief Executive, Jean Palmer, who deal so efficiently with the initiatives and queries that they receive on a very regular basis relating to financial matters and business delivery improvements. And again, as I did last year, I also thank the staff of this Council. We now have some of the best staff in local government who, with few exceptions, provide excellent services to our residents day in, day out. Madam Mayor, we do not underestimate the financial challenges that we as a Council still have to deal with. It has never been more important than now to have hands-on, strong leadership and sound financial management ability running this Council. In Hillingdon, the Conservative Administration have a proven record of management and financial ability that is not remotely matched by any other party, which is why, Councillor Allen, you've been sitting in opposition for 20 years and will continue to do so. And it is that 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 enables us to continue to put our residents first. Our people, our environment, our heritage are aspects of service delivery that are underpinned by the proposals of this budget. Madam Mayor, this is a first-class budget for a first-class borough. 10 out of 10 for Ellington Conservative Council. I'm delighted to formally second it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Paddyford. Councillor Bianco. Disappointingly, I will be brief. There's much I could repeat of what has been said already. There's much I could rebut of what has been said over there. But I think it's quite clear that tonight this Council will go forward with a balanced, robust and sound financial budget for the forthcoming year. And I would just like to repeat what I said earlier. We have delivered in the past, we are delivering now and we will deliver again in the future and I move. Thank you, Councillor Bianco. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We now move to the final vote of the evening. We do have to have a name vote on the, on the budget itself, so we're voting on the proposals as moved by Councillor Bianco, seconded by Councillor Puddyfoot on pages 4, 5 and 6 of the Green Papers. If you could indicate if you are for, against or abstaining. Councillor Ahmad Wallana. Councillor Allen. Against. Councillor Barnes. Four. Councillor Bianco. Four. Councillor Birra. Four. Councillor Bridges. Four. Councillor Burles. Four. Councillor Burrows. Four. Councillor Chamdell. Councillor Chapman, Councillor G. Cooper, Councillor J. Cooper, Councillor Cawthorn, Councillor Crow, Councillor Curling, Councillor Dan, Councillor Davis, Councillor Dennis, Councillor Deer, Councillor Dillon, Councillor Dot, Councillor Duduchu, Councillor Duncan, Councillor Edwards, Councillor Edgington, Councillor Flynn. Thank you. Councillor Garg. Councillor Garg. Thank you. Councillor Gillam. Councillor Graham. Councillor Hagger. Councillor Hensley. Councillor Higgins. Councillor Jackson. Councillor Kaufman. Councillor Kelly. Councillor Catra. Councillor Lavery. Councillor Lewis. Councillor D. Mills. Councillor R. Mills. Councillor Money. Councillor Morse. Councillor Nelson, Councillor O'Brien, Councillor Oswell, Councillor Palmer, Councillor Puddyfoot, Councillor Riley, Councillor Sansapuri, Councillor Seaman Digby, Councillor Simmons, Councillor Singh, Councillor Stead, Councillor Sweeting, Councillor White, Councillor Yarrow, Mr Deputy Mayor, Madam Mayor. Thank you Madam Mayor, that's carried by 40 votes to 18. That being the uh, end of our business this evening, I now declare the meeting closed.